Okay, let's talk about how to do a qualitative analysis flowchart. And in order to do that, we're going to look at uh, the part of the flowchart that's already done. And uh, this initial circle is the solution that you're going to be starting with. And the way that you'll do it is you'll have a known with all of these ions in it. These are cations. And then you'll have an unknown with some portion of these in it. And you'll do qualitative analysis for, to both of them. The known, which has all of them, will always show a positive test for all the cations, so you know what it looks like. And the unknown will show a positive test for some of them, but not others. Now, um, what you're going to do is uh, the circle here represents what you're starting with. Then uh, you're going to do what it says, like you're going to draw an arrow, and you're going to write what you're supposed to do, including the step. So, um, and step one is just visually inspect, so you don't see that on here. But let's go to step two. Step two says, add five drops of six molar sodium hydroxide, cover it with pH paper, and you'll see the reactions given here are that ammonium, one of the cations in your known and possibly your unknown, will react with the hydroxide to make ammonium hydroxide aqueous. Ammonium hydroxide aqueous will then, in an equilibrium, uh, form NH3 gas, that's ammonia gas, and water. And that gas will then be detected on a pH paper. This is the lab 10 actual lab paper. You've got the uh, uh, some drops of your unknown down here and or known because you're doing them separately, not together. And uh, when you add the six molar sodium hydroxide, place the pH paper on the underside of a watch glass on top of a beaker. And uh, you can see all of the detailed instructions are here. When you make your flow chart, you're just abbreviating them. And uh, what it says is that uh, if the pH paper turns um, the color for base and an indicator paper, so it depends on what kind of indicator paper you have. But when it does that, if it turns the color for a base, you know that the ammonia gas is coming off of the bottom here, coming up to the paper because it's a gas, turning the paper blue usually, but not always, in which case that is the sign that you have confirmation of presence of ammonium in your unknown. And that's step two. And basically you're taking this paragraph and converting it into here, right? Arrow means you add something and or do a check. Um, squares are typically going to be precipitate or solution and what's in them. Diamonds are going to be centrifuge and decant, as we will say, coming up. So now let's go down to step three. Step 3A says, to an unknown, to your known and unknown solutions, add 10 drops of 6 molar HCl, 10 drops of 6 molar HCl, mix, centrifuge, and decant. Mix well, let's stand for a couple minutes, centrifuge and decant. The centrifuge and decant is this diamond. When you centrifuge, you're going to collect all the solid in the bottom of the test tube. The aqueous portion will be the liquid that's above. When you decant, you're pouring that liquid into a new test tube while leaving the solid behind. So you end up with an aqueous phase. And um, now the question is, what goes where, like which of these ions go into the solid and which go into the aqueous phase. To check that, we're on step 3A. So you're going to come down here in the lab. The step 3 says there are few insoluble chlorides. Uh, two of those are silver chloride and lead 2 chloride. Uh, and even lead 2 chloride is slightly soluble. Um, there are more details. But what this is telling you is that silver chloride and lead 2 chloride are going to be in your precipitate. And everything else, if we follow this down, is going to be your solution, meaning the ammonium, some of the lead, that's why this is in funny brackets, 
uh, may make it into here, even though hopefully some, or well, definitely some, but hopefully all will go into the precipitate. And precipitate is the word that means solid in a in an in a double replacement reaction because it tends to oftentimes precipitate or rain down to the bottom. That's us too. Anyway, so all of the other ions are in the solution. And then for step 3B, and the steps, what you do are up here, and then down below is what happens. It says wash the precipitate with 10 drops of water containing one drop of six molar HCl. You see it says that right here. Centrifuge and decant. That's why you've got another diamond. And you just follow along writing what you do in your flow chart and then writing using the notes down below for each step to tell you which one is in the aqueous phase and which one's in the solid phase. And the solid phase is the precipitate. That's an introduction onto how you do your flow charts and you can follow through all the way through step eight, or sorry, step seven. Step eight is to be continued by you to create this flow chart here of what you're doing for qualitative analysis.